feel like my DNA is Korean, even though of course my blood is not Korean, but I feel so attached to that culture. I just feel like my whole life revolves around Korea. Say thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone for the amazing, overwhelming support for our marriage. It was, you know, a difficult decision knowing that the world would criticize us, but we're extremely happy and it's, you know, Jimin, someone I've looked up to and loved since, uh, no, he debuted in 2013. I don't believe in God, I believe in Jimin. Like, Jimin is God. Like, I'm so happy to have transitioned from British to Korean. I'm now gonna be identical to Jimin, even more identical than I already was, so. And I've had 18 surgeries to look like Jimin, and I feel like I've nailed it, I'm almost there. Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here, and against all odds, I am still an alpha male. Ollie London is a musician, YouTube, and reality star who's graced the stage of shows such as Botched, Hooked on the Look, and Dr. Phil for their obsession with K-pop star Jimin, to the point where they've spent over $150,000 on plastic surgery to look like the star. Ollie London has recently sparked controversy after coming out as transracial from white to Korean, offending both the trans community and Korean people everywhere. And actually, the more I look into it, the more I see an awful lot of similarities between Ollie London and Trisha Paytas in the way that they both go on endless reality shows, come out as controversial identities. I'm tired of being a boring ass white person. Like, white people are boring, they just are, whatever. Like, I, whatever. Like, I identify as a white person, I feel like that's how I was born, but I'm not quite sure. People can identify as like a Disney prince or an animal, which some people do. Some people identify as aliens. Like, why can't I identify as Korean? I don't don't see why people seem to have an issue. But uh, the woke mob on Twitter have just been attacking me nonstop. You know, they're mm. preaching about, oh, don't bully people online, look after mental health. Yet they're the same people attacking me online. So. I just don't get why there's such a backlash. And just generally cross the line between trolling and delusion, which begs the question of what Ollie London's motivations are. Are they trolling for the sake of being controversial, or is this genuine? Or perhaps it's a bit of both. Ollie London first rose to fame when they were on the reality program Hooked on the Look in 2019, and people started creating reaction videos. He wants to be him, but he also have a crush on him. What is that? How does that work? Ugh, it's getting creepier as we go. And at this point, Ollie had had quite a lot of procedures to look like his idol, Jimin, and they seem to have a borderline unhealthy obsession with it. A lot of the things that Ollie said in Hooked on the Look has actually been contradicted recently, especially this important line explaining that they were not aiming to change race. I'm not actually changing my race. I have a deep respect for Korean culture. It's cultural appreciation, not cultural appropriation. Why should it be an issue when someone can change to Kim Kardashian like Thousands and thousands of women do that. Korean people love me. In 2019, Ollie also released what they brand to be a K-pop music video to a song of their own creation called Perfection that was of questionable quality but carried a key message of this plastic surgery positivity. Ollie explains a lot that they get surgery because it makes them happy and feel happy in themselves, and that is a valid argument, of course. I'm not against plastic surgery in moderation, but at what point does it become a problem? People who have addictions will often tell you that it makes them happy, like smoking, for example. People become addicted because it gives them a hit. So is Ollie going back time and time again because it gives them a boost rather than long-term happiness? It seems that with each surgery, there's a temporary fulfillment, but this quickly gets replaced by the need to alter something else about themselves. It seems like a constant cycle of convincing themselves that they'll be happy as soon as they get X procedure done and then it happens, it doesn't fulfill them and so they get another because they can't face the reality that they will never look like their favourite K-pop star no matter how much they alter their face. Just watch the way that they say they are Jimin in front of their friends to deflect their concerns. I'm almost done. Just need to do my eyes and a little almost, eyebrow lift. Almost. Almost done. Almost, almost done. Look what happened to Michael Jackson. Well, I'm not you Michael Jackson, I'm Jimin. I'm not Michael Jackson, I'm Jimin. I'm not, not going that far. Ollie. I'm Oli. Oli Ayo. The like to dislike ratio was pretty divided on Ollie London's first viral appearance, and so I started to scroll through the comments to see what people were thinking. One person said, Korean people love me. I don't think so, they just don't want to be rude. I'm not Michael Jackson, I'm Jimin. No, you are a surgical experiment gone too far. 
I'm not trying to change my race, it's cultural appreciation, not cultural appropriation. Also, Ollie London, hi, I'm Jimin. Ollie London claims that all of the surgery has been inspired by an ever-evolving obsession with the K-pop star Jimin. Jimin is a member of the incredibly popular Korean pop group BTS, and though I'm unsure of whether Ollie is trolling or not, their obsession with Jimin seems very intense. Let's all take a seat, grab a snack, and watch this Valentine's Day video that Ollie made for Jimin in February of this year. Warning, it's been in my nightmares ever since. Valentine's Day to Min, selling hay. I hope you like all these flowers in this card. Selling hay to Min. Hey to Min and Yang it's Oli London, your amazing husband. If you are watching this video right now, I just want you to know that I love you so much and happy Valentine's Day to you. I just want to say I miss you so much and I hope to see you soon. You are the best husband in the world, Jimin. I even have a mini Jimin here with me as well. And I bought you all these roses for Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, Jimin. And I also wrote you this amazing card. So I'm going to read it out to you, okay? So, Jimin. Dear Jimin, it's been one year since we got married. Selling hey, bought a hey. Happy Valentine's Day. With lots of love, your husband, Oli London. P.S. Don't believe the rumours. I will never leave you for Stray Kids, Felix Opa. Waiting, selling hey. So I hope you like your card, Jimin, and I really hope you get to see this video. And I want you to know how much I love you. I will always support you and BTS. I will always be your biggest fan and your biggest uh, lover. So I love you, Jimin, and happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy your flowers. The Jimin that they are talking about in this video is a figment of Ollie's imagination. It's not uncommon to daydream about a relationship with a crush or celebrity crush, but photoshopping it, broadcasting it, spending money on it, and then acting like it's real online? That's crossing a bit of a line in my opinion. Ollie London either has no self-awareness or is a very clever troll, and from what I've seen I'm leaning towards the former, though I'm still holding out hope that they're actually pulling a huge prank and all of this delusion is just a weird experiment. I don't know, I'm trying to find ways that this could be justified, and it is a struggle to be honest. Ollie London's next big appearance was on the popular American talk show Dr. Phil, which has historically been a bit of a melting pot for controversial internet personalities, Ollie London being no exception. Dr. Phil has been criticised in recent times for his approach to some of his guests and the general ethics of publicly humiliating people for profit, but all in all I think Ollie London really didn't help themselves by going on Dr. Phil, unless their plan was to get more attention, in which case they achieved that. Ollie London's appearance on Dr. Phil was over a year ago, and I can only assume that since their last surgery they've spent even more to try and achieve this so-called Jimin face that Ollie seems to have strayed so far from. It's quite a hard episode to watch as we see Ollie's constant denial that it's a problem in any way and completely unashamed, unself aware confessions about their love for Jimin. We go into Ollie's past and the ways that they talked about how plastic surgery changed their life and allowed them to overcome anxiety and rejection that they felt when they were younger. Ollie claims that plastic surgery has brought the happiness that they were never able to achieve before, but also admits that the happiness that they receive from surgery wears off after a while and that's why they have to keep getting more. I mean, I've, I've been unhappy since I was a teenager. You know, I used to get teased at school, I used to get bullied, and I moved to Korea in 2013 and I fell in love with K-pop, fell in love with BTS, but it was Jimin in particular that became my absolute obsession. So, I don't know, I've just never been happy with the way I looked. I was always insecure, so I thought, let me change myself. And now, you know, it's given me so much happiness, but I've, I've put myself through a lot of risks, and I do admit that. But you're wanting to be a um, clone or a replica of someone else, which is an insult to you. No, I think it's a tribute to Jimin, actually. You know, it's showing my appreciation for Jimin because I'm so in love with him, I'm so obsessed. So it's my appreciation for Jimin. So it's, I don't think it reflects badly. I'm not losing my, who I am. I'm still the same person underneath. Well, you, no, you're not. To me, it seems like all of this surgery is only exacerbating the insecurities that they used to have. They admit themselves that their image is still causing them hurt when they look in the mirror, and that, to me, is very troubling. And then, then after about two months or something, that you know, great feeling of, wow, I love my new face, kind of wears off, and then I'm always thinking about the next thing. It just makes me happy. It's like a facade. Deep down, I I'm, I'm, I'm feel sad about myself, like I'm always trying to change myself and I never feel good enough. You know, when I look in the mirror, I never feel beautiful, I never feel good, and I get so much hate online as well, and it just kind of adds to that feeling. So I just, it just makes me feel better about myself. 
This Dr. Phil episode is actually edited to make us sympathise with Ollie London. They actually open up about their struggles and Dr. Phil seems to try and empathise and bring out a certain truth that wasn't brought out in the Hooked on the Look episode. This Dr. Phil appearance could have helped Ollie London but instead they seem to go straight back to trolling online. Ollie London then made a follow up video titled What Really Happened on Dr. Phil claiming that Dr. Phil changed their life and that the toughest thing that Dr. Phil said was that Ollie London was not Jamin. What was the, tough, like, the toughest thing Dr. Phil said to you? I mean, Dr. Hill kept saying I didn't look like Jamin, so that was really upsetting because I like kept saying, no, Dr. Phil, I've got the same outfit, the same hair, the same face, <laughs> and he just couldn't see it, so I like had to keep saying that. But um, the toughest thing he kind of said was, you know, you're not Jamin, you are Ollie, you need to find the real Ollie, and that, that was like quite hard to take. They are saying that the hardest thing for them to hear was that Ollie was not Ollie. The way that they approach this video is quite scary to me and again really crossing the line between whether this is genuinely what they think or whether it's some very heightened form of trolling. After these reality appearances, Ollie London started receiving a lot of online criticism, with people making TikToks and YouTube videos airing their opinions and grievances with Ollie. Also, I'll note that sometimes people use he, him pronouns when talking about Ollie, as this was before they came out as non-binary. Ignore Ollie London now. If you have been following me for a while, you know I never use my platform to start drama or send other creators hate, but enough is enough. So if you're an international fan or you like Korean culture, I'm sure you've heard of Ollie London. He's like the definition of a Korea boo. He just makes content like this and it's... This creator showed a phone call recording of Ollie London and he literally says he's talking about Black Lives Matter just to stay relevant on the internet. There's many ways you can make money on the internet and Ollie London is a man in his 30s who knows exactly what he's doing. Writing negative comments on his video is still gonna boost the algorithm and he's still gonna make money off of the videos. There's so many non-Koreans on this app who genuinely love K-pop and Korean culture. Ollie London is not one of them and the only thing he's good at is making Korea look like this stupid, childish country. Stop supporting him. Enough, and then also because I've been a lot on Twitter, there's been so many people talking about me on Twitter because I'm supporting the Black Lives Matter and protests and stuff. So I had 200,000 views on the video. So because of that as well, I'm getting a lot of requests. So it's just, you know, I'm just staying relevant wow. uh, in the news, on TV and stuff, because, you know, the more exposure I have, you know, if I'm trending on Twitter or whatever, I'm on TV, then the more cameos I get. So yeah, I'm just, just keeping myself relevant. Okay, your Korean is really good, but it's actually Salang Hey. Salang Hey, okay? So repeat after me. Salang Hey. Please tell me that Ollie London did not just tell a Korean how to say Salang Hey. Listen, Ollie. It's not Salang Hey, Salang Hey. It's Salang Hey. And you can't do it because you clearly didn't grow up learning Korean. That's because you're not Korean. Even if it's a joke, the audacity to tell an actual Korean how to speak Korean, like, stop. One critic in particular suggested that the whole Jimin obsession was completely made up for the free trips, plastic surgery and clout so that Ollie could get attention and have this sort of music career that they're attempting. And I think that's a really interesting angle, personally, as I think that the obsession does seem to fuel something in Ollie London, but there is definitely an element of fabrication, of trolling and of seemingly desperate need for attention. For me, it was clear from the very beginning that he was never a fan of Jimin. He doesn't care about BTS. Hell, I don't even think that he's interested in K-pop at all. It's really obvious that he made that whole obsession with Jimin up for more clout, for more free plastic surgery, free trips, other opportunities like becoming a singer. <laughs> and I'm not saying that this is the truth, but for me, it is. In response to the criticism, Ollie made a diss track to try and diss all of the people criticizing them, even though most of the critics were Korean people airing their valid concerns. Seems like you just don't want to hear from the culture that you supposedly respect so much. To Lisa, you can please her, she'll never crack a smile. Priscilla, she Godzilla, her face is full of filler. She's like such a whack job. Stop hating on me, girl. You know, you make me her. Clyde, I gotta hide. You like crazy, so obsessed with me. I'm gonna let it slide, boy. You throw it hella shade at me. What's not clicking? What's not clicking? 
Yeah. So I'm at a crossroads because the diss track video completely dismisses all of the people airing their valid concerns and it seems like Ollie has watched these videos so they do know the concerns that people are airing yet they still try to brush them off as if it's nothing unless they secretly know that they're being offensive and are now just being controversial for the sake of being controversial. Either way this has only been exacerbated recently as Ollie London has been all over the news after coming out as transracial and now identifying as Korean. Another even deeper turn for the worst. Ollie London's most recent controversy came after they got their most recent eye surgery to have what they deem to be Korean eyes and says that they now identify as Korean. A few weeks ago they posted a post-surgery video titled Being Korean in which they talk about how they identify as transracial and deems this to be part of the LGBT community. They also came out as non-binary in the same breath saying that their pronouns are they them which is completely valid but also that their pronouns are Korean slash Jumin which is grammatically not a pronoun. Something that's been like on my mind for a long time and I've been very confused about how I identify. I've been very, very confused and, you know, I've seen a lot of other people online that have come out and been very brave about it and shared their story about how they identify their gender, their pronouns, etc. So, you know, I've taken courage from these incredibly brave um, people and it is Pride Month at the moment. So, you know, I thought this was the best time to do it, um, you know, and add, add a voice, add strength to the LGBTQ plus I community um so i am going to come out today and say that i've been transitioning i've been very unhappy with who i am deep down um for the last eight years and i've you know i've had like 18 plastic surgeries now and i've just had a facelift um a brow lift a temple lift an eye surgery a canthoplasty um and my teeth done as well um just these are just part of my transition um I'm feeling really good. I'm for the first time in my life. I feel beautiful. You know, I'm looking in the mirror and I love the way I look and uh, feel happy. Um, and I hope people can respect my decision. It's a very tough decision to come out this way, um, but I am coming out as non-binary. Um, I don't feel I identify as male or female. I just feel like I'm just in the middle. Um, and my pronouns are they, them, Korean, Jimin, because I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean. And I do look Korean now. I do feel Korean. I don't identify as British, so please don't um, refer to me, any media or anyone online as British, because I, I identify as Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. That's exactly how I look now. Um, and I also identify as Jimmy and that's my Korean name, but uh... The video got mass disliked and the comments were harsh, but I do have an ounce of respect, a very tiny ounce, for Ollie keeping comments and likes and dislikes on, as most people in their position turn them off as soon as they get criticism. Maybe another hint that this is all a persona, though if it is all a persona for attention, I cannot fathom why you would irreversibly destroy your face for it. So I do think that there is some element of disturbing reality attached to it. Some of the comments read, drawing lines on a pumpkin does doesn't make it a watermelon, a Korean saying. Do they even see these K-pop idols as people? Never mind that it makes no sense. Saying you identify as another living individual is really disrespectful and creepy. Granted, they don't sound at all sincere when they're saying this stuff, so it's probably for attention. I was totally on board with them coming out as non-binary, but lost all my respect identifying as Korean slash Jimin. He literally downgraded the whole Korean race to just looks. I do look Korean now. You look like an Animal Crossing character that got stung by a wasp. As a Korean myself, I'm really offended. To be honest, it's ridiculous. It's not just because you did some plastic surgery to look like someone, it's that you don't understand Korea properly and use Korean idols to gain popularity and attract attention. And I saw a flag you made for yourself. You're ignoring the meanings and I can't find any respect for Korea from you. How can you call yourself a Korean when you don't have any understanding of the country? If you really wanted to be Korean, you could come to Korea, learn about the country and culture and earn your citizenship. Korean is not a sexuality, seek some help. The flag that this comment is referring to is a flag of Ollie's creation, saying that it's their new official flag for being a non-binary person who identifies as Korean, to which people took, understandably, a fair amount of offence to. Oh my gosh, you cannot be serious. This gives me a reason to talk about the Taeguki. What is Ollie London gonna do, make another diss track about me? Anyways, the Taeguki is white because it symbolizes peace and purity. The red symbolizes positive cosmic forces, and the blue represents opposing negative cosmic forces. And the trigrams are heaven, sun, moon, and earth. 
The main problem with this new development in the eye surgery and the identifying as Korean when you're a white person is mainly the disrespect and complete disregard for the racism that Asian people face every day. Asian people have to face racism from white people every day of their lives and so many Asian people will have stories of being bullied by white people specifically because of their eyes or the way that they look. So to just do it because it's trendy and for the aesthetic value without appreciating everything that Asian people have to go through is quite frankly disgusting in my opinion. There's an amazing video by Shaliza Moe called white people pretending to be Asian rant, where she goes into her personal story of discrimination growing up and how hurtful it is for white people to just claim a race like this. It's a personal story so I won't insert a clip, instead I will just strongly encourage you to go and watch her video that will be linked at the top of the description. So Ollie London has since been on multiple British talk shows to announce their transracial transition, first appearing on GB News which is sort of like our Fox News and then the popular morning show This Morning. Ollie was interrogated on GB News with them mainly focusing on Ollie's genetic identity. Ollie preaches, be who you want to be, it's 2021, the world is free narrative, saying that they're not hurting anyone and yet with all the criticism they receive they simply cannot be oblivious to how ridiculous they sound and how many people that they actually are hurting. Can you see that there could be problems if we can all say that we're parts of different cultures or that we're another ethnicity? I mean, I get there's so much sensitivity when it comes to race because, of course, so many people um, from different races have experienced uh, racism a lot. But, you know, I'm not one of those people. I just feel these days, 2021, we should be able to embrace who we are be who we want to be and uh, as long as we're not hurting anybody which I don't feel like I'm hurting anybody the Korean no. people love me they're obsessed with me they're always very sweet so I'm you know I'm not out there to offend people and I, I can see why some people find it sensitive because race is always a sensitive subject especially when people have experienced racism but uh, people need to be a bit more understanding and open-minded because you know it's 2021 we can express ourselves in different ways Ollie's appearance on this morning was much less of an interrogation as they received a little more sympathy and understanding from the hosts. Whether Ollie deserved this is questionable, but nonetheless it was slightly less hostile and Ollie was really able to just roam free with their transracial Caucasian to Korean theory. Someone suddenly deeming themselves Korean is incredibly offensive, especially since it effectively trivialises our identities because they're suddenly trendy. You know, I, I think there's so much, um, so many problems these days with woke culture and there's so many people, which I think it's fantastic people have opinions, but I feel like people are so quick to play the race card. So obviously Paper Magazine is a very kind of, um, you know, very woke magazine and which is fine, you know, but uh, I do feel like they were quite harsh with their criticism and I feel like they have a lack of understanding. And uh, of course, I understand the journalist was uh, of Korean ancestry and I respect Korea so much, but I just feel like people... People are so quick to judge these days, you know, it's fine to identify as a hundred different genders, it's fine to identify as an alien if you want to, but why can't I identify as Korean? So I don't see why people take offence and I understand that she may be from Korean ancestry and I respect that, but I just feel like, uh, you know, she's she's just targeting me uh, wrongly, you know, I haven't actually done anything wrong to offend Korea and... I feel like I'm one of the biggest ambassadors for Korea and for Korean people. I still can't believe that just a few years ago they were saying cultural appreciation, not appropriation. They knew that this was wrong in the past. They knew the difference between appreciation and appropriation. So why are they pretending to be oblivious now? They're completely disregarding the racism and politics that come with the Asian identity. You can't just choose your identity like that. I noticed on the Trisha Paytas video that I made a few months ago, people frequently comment on how Trisha is obviously an online troll and therefore harmless. But but I do think that in some cases trolling can be harmful. I think that in my opinion, Ollie London's obsession with Jimin is some form of trolling for attention. Even if it has a basis in reality, they've done things like marry a cardboard cutout of Jimin, said that they have a Bible and pray to Jimin. I pray every day when I pray, it's not to God, it's to Jimin. And um, you know, I have a Bible with Jimin's face on it. So I do, I'm very religious when it comes to Jimin and I just worship him. And I think everyone should worship him. He should rule the world. But when you actually ask Ollie what in particular they like about Jimin, they just say very generic things like, why wouldn't I like Jimin? He's just great. Which you could say about almost anyone. Why do you love Jimin so much, may I ask? Like, how could you like even question why you love Jimin? Like, Jimin is so cute, so beautiful. Like, 
everyone should worship Jimin like a god. Like, I don't believe in God, I believe in Jimin. Like. Ultimately, the Jimin obsession in itself is pretty harmless. The only person it could be harming is Jimin himself, who I hope gets a restraining order. But I think that when Ollie London starts comparing their experience of identifying as a different race to the ways in which trans people identify, it gets very harmful to the trans community and to the Asian community. The trans community in itself is already a hugely misunderstood and discriminated against community, so to align yourself with it when you're trolling is going to give people even more of an excuse to disregard real trans experiences, because those who don't know anything about either experience and see Ollie London on a morning show are going to have a very warped perception of what it means to be trans, and see this ridiculous ridiculous caricature as a spokesperson for younger people and their identities. I just think it's a desperate ploy for attention that will only get Ollie so far. It won't be long before they're sitting alone with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt with nothing to show for it but a face that's been warped beyond recognition. And to me at least, that's not worth any amount of clout. So thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate you making it all the way to the end. I have as always been your Uncle Herman and I will see you very soon in my next one.